Let's Go Electric here. Today is Sunday, September 7th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Volkswagen has announced it will temporarily suspend production of its ID4 electric SUV at its Chattanooga, Tennessee plant starting in late October due to declining market demand. The decision will result in the furlough of approximately 160 employees. According to Volkswagen spokesperson Michael Lauder, affected workers will receive 80% of their base pay through a combination of state unemployment benefits and supplemental company payments while retaining full health and employment benefits. The company has not specified the duration of the production halt or when furloughed employees might return, stating the decision is market-driven to align production with demand. As we reported last April, workers at the Chattanooga plant voted to join the United Auto Workers Union, with 73% of roughly 4,300 eligible employees supporting union representation. This marked a historic win for the UAW in the South, where unionization efforts have faced resistance. However, contract negotiations between Volkswagen and the UAW are still ongoing to this day, with no agreement yet reached. The production pause follows a significant recall and three-month stop sale order issued in September of 2024. The recall included 98,000 ID4 vehicles in the U.S. due to a faulty door handle mechanism, which could cause doors to open unexpectedly. ID4 sales in the U.S. saw a drop of 65% during the second quarter of 2025 compared to 2024, with only 1,992 units sold. Volkswagen emphasized its continued commitment to the ID4 and its Chattanooga workforce despite the adjustment. Recent reports suggest that Volkswagen's luxury subsidiary, Audi, is exploring options to utilize the Chattanooga plant or construct a new facility nearby to produce electric vehicles for the U.S. market and circumvent tariffs. While no official confirmation has been made, industry sources indicate Audi's interest stems from the region's established manufacturing infrastructure and proximity to Volkswagen's operations. I recently moved to the Chattanooga area and have received confirmation that some VW employees who had been working in South Africa are now working at the factory on a one to three year temporary assignment. VW's presence in South Africa includes a factory where all polo models are produced, as well as the T-Cross. Could this workforce be helping the facility tool up to produce the low-priced Polo Class EV in the USA to compete with the Chevy Bolt, Nissan Leaf, Kia EV3, and Tesla's upcoming affordable model? Recently, Volkswagen revealed their previous small electric hatchback concept called the ID2 All will go into production and will now be called the ID Polo. The ID Polo and ID Polo GTI will make their first public appearance worldwide at the IAA Mobility Auto Show in Munich, which takes place from September 8th to 14th. It's likely the ID Polo will be sold primarily in Europe, but Volkswagen will also unveil the concept vehicle for an electric compact SUV, the new ID Cross concept at IIA Mobility. The production version of the ID Cross, sibling to the T Cross, is expected to launch at the end of 2026. We'll share more details when they become available. With IAA mobility around the corner, German automakers are set to unveil many vehicles. Volkswagen's luxury brand, Audi, will be among them. This week, the brand has revealed its Concept C, an all-electric two-seat sports car, which introduces the foundation of a production model slated for release in 2027. The Concept showed off an electrically retractable hardtop roof, minimalist interior with motorized display screen, and new exterior design language. The production version will sit between the former Audi TT and the R8 in regards to pricing, which is anywhere between about $53,000 to $160,000. It will be longer and wider than both of those models. The vehicle is expected to share underpinnings with Porsche's next generation electric 718 models, which had been delayed to 2027. Do you like this new design direction from Audi? The only EV convertible available in the U.S. is the Hummer EV. I'd like to see this one on the roads with the Genesis X convertible, Polestar 6, and the Tesla Roadster.
Audi also announced this week that their new EV owners will have access to Tesla's supercharging network for their DC fast charging needs starting this month. A CCS to NAX adapter will become available soon for existing owners at an undisclosed price. To note, new 2025 and up Q6 e-tron, A6 Sportback e-tron, and e-tron GT vehicles arriving at dealerships will include the adapter at purchase. Audi's app and in-vehicle navigation will soon include Tesla supercharger locations as points of interest. Audi's Q4 e-tron is the only model that is not currently able to utilize the Audi NAX adapter or the supercharging network. The brand says they will provide more information in a future announcement. But Audi isn't the only one gaining access to an additional 23,500 supercharger dispensers. More Volkswagen brands are too. Porsche has also announced access to Tesla's supercharging network with adapters included for buyers of their 2026 model year Taycan and Macan EVs. For previous model year owners, a complimentary adapter will soon be available with a notification coming from the My Porsche app when it's ready. Owners of 2024 and older model years of the Taycan will be able to purchase an adapter from either the Porsche online shop or from their local dealer, which will cost them $185 plus taxes and shipping. The brand mentioned that plug and charge capability is expected to follow in the coming months, which allows EV drivers to plug in their vehicle into a charging dispenser and automatically authenticate, process payment, and start charging without having to open an app or swipe a card. This week, Porsche also unveiled plans to incorporate a wireless charging receiver in their new Cayenne EV. Other details about the full-sized SUV were covered in last week's episode of The Current, and I'll link it here if you missed it. This will mark the first available production EV to include a factory-installed optional wireless charging receiver in the U.S. market. The wireless charging option will support charging speeds up to 11 kilowatts, just as a corded AC power source, and the brand said the wireless efficiency exceeds 90%. All of the equipment is contained within the floor plate, which means self-installation will be possible for most owners. It is designed to operate in temperatures between minus 40 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. To initiate the charging process, the Cayenne EV only has to be parked above the floor plate. A special view in the surround view parking function is designed to make it easier to maneuver the Cayenne to the optimal charging position, and the vehicle will adjust the ride height automatically and engage the parking brake when aligned. The base plate has a motion detector and foreign object detection and will pause the charging process automatically if interference is detected. Pricing has not yet been announced, but what do you think is a reasonable premium to pay for this technology? Other brands have implemented pilot programs for this technology, including BMW and Genesis. Tesla has acquired a wireless charging company and has incorporated wireless receiver module connection points in their new vehicles, including the Cybertruck. A couple of years ago, I published a real-world wireless charging demonstration at the Detroit Smart Parking Lab with startup company Hevo. I learned a lot about how far the technology has come. I will link that in the video's description if you want to check that out. Wireless charging can actually make the task of energizing effortless while optimizing EVs for a completely autonomous future. This week, BMW took the cover off their 2026 iX3 and provided a lot of great details. It is their first model built on their Noya class lineup. The all-electric sports activity vehicle will debut as a dual-motor iX350 xDrive variant with 463 horsepower and 476 pound-feet of torque, achieving 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.7 seconds and a top speed of 130 miles per hour. This variant will also include a 108.7 kilowatt hour usable battery capacity based on an 800 volt architecture, offering an EPA estimated range of up to 400 miles. It will be capable of DC fast charging up to 400 kilowatts through its NAX port and can add approximately 230 miles of range in just 10 minutes. BMW says they have included battery management technology with an integrated switching matrix developed completely in-house by the BMW Group so that the vehicle can also be charged on 400 volt dispensers. It will offer battery preconditioning, which can be initiated manually or automatically when routed to a DC fast charger. 
Plug and charge compatibility will be a standard feature too. Standard level two AC charging reaches up to 11 kilowatts, but BMW will offer optional 22 kilowatt AC charging as well. Bi-directional charging capabilities are available with up to 11 kilowatts of power exportable to the home or grid. BMW Digital Key Plus Phone as Key technology will be standard and compatible with iPhone and Android devices, including smartwatches. The app will also be able to provide vehicle functions and information, including charging curves. Inside the vehicle includes BMW's new panoramic iDrive with customization capabilities and an updated version of BMW's Intelligent Assistant that will leverage a large language model with their partner Amazon for AI functionality. It will also have an available 3D head-up display. The center touchscreen display will offer apps and connectivity such as Spotify, in-car gaming with Air Console, Disney+, YouTube, Zoom video conferencing, and more. The cargo area includes up to 61 cubic feet of space with the seats down and up to 18 cubic feet with them up, and there's an available frunk with an additional two cubic feet of storage. It has a ground clearance of 6.9 inches, a fording depth of 15.7 inches, and a max towing capacity of just over 4,400 pounds. A whole suite of driver assistance technologies are included, as well as new driving dynamics thanks to BMW's new AI-compatible central high-performance control unit called the Heart of Joy, which we previously detailed here on The Current. The 2026 BMW iX3 will debut in the United States in summer of 2026, with the X-Drive 50 model starting at under $60,000 MSRP. The rear-wheel drive iX3 40S drive and lower trim level all-wheel drive variant, the iX3 40X drive, will be available in early 2027, with an MSRP starting under $55,000 and estimated ranges slightly over 300 miles. Production will take place at BMW Group's new plant in Hungary, with a long wheelbase version also being built in China for the Chinese market. BMW says the technologies of the Noya Classa will be incorporated into a total of 40 new models and model updates between now and 2027. 40. What do you think of BMW's latest attempt of their next generation EVs? I can't wait to drive one because I barely scratched the surface when it comes to features and capabilities of the new iX3. Even more EVs are going to be unveiled this week at IAA Mobility, including the new Mercedes GLC Electric and Hyundai Ioniq 3. I'll be sure to link information on those live streams below if you want to check them out, but don't worry, we will cover them in next week's episode. These have been our top EV news stories of this week. If you found value in our coverage, we ask that you subscribe and share this video online. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.